Okay, in this video we're going to get into sound editing or voice editing and of course you can think of a voice as being an instrument that's within a zone and you can think of a zone as being the one of 16 tracks that are within a scene. So we're going to be changing what type of sounds we have here and also changing parameters of those sounds. We got into sound editing a little bit with some of these LFO knobs at the bottom in previous videos, but now we're going to show how to edit some of the core parameters that make up a sound sounds the way that it does so you know you may have one that sounds like a synth or a piano you could change that to a woodwind or a brass or a square wave so you can do all these parameters and then you have access to all the envelopes as well so you can change the filter and pitch and eg we're going to get into that in this video it's one of the most in-depth videos so if you have to pause it and kind of practice something or maybe watch it a couple of times don't feel too bad and it'll probably be so long that I may stop kind of in the middle of here and then cover the rest of it in a separate video so if you want to follow along go ahead and click on the A004 this is the fourth one over from the A01 that starts up when you first boot it up and by the way you don't always have to boot up at A001 you can click the menu button and go to system and general and there you can change what scene you want to start up at so that's handy if you're restarting a lot for some reason or if you need to work in a studio or a live setting where you need to always start at a beginning certain scene okay so the reason I'm choosing A004 here is it has a pretty stabby like in your face kind of synth sound up here it's a split so at least in the right hand range it has this sound <laughs> like a like a trance kind of string sound or something then the bottom it has a bass and if we click on the zone view here let's click on it that's fine so click on it where you have a 16 up display and just press a chord or anything there and you can see how it's triggering the levels it's making the zone 5 and 6 so 5 and 6 are both uh, triggering or the we have zone 5 act active now and when we play a chord it's triggering the voice that is in zone 5 and 6 so just keep that in mind when you're editing anytime you're working on editing any parameter here you're only editing one particular voice and that that could be a little confusing sometimes because in your scene when you play the keys you may be triggering more than one voice so you have to make sure that you're editing or actively editing the one that you have selected and it's the one that you want to edit for example so um, let's leave it on five and then let's change some of the values here so for instance we'll change the filter so you can see it filtered out uh, whatever was on uh, five which is the hard style but it kind of left the super saw kind of left that filtered up but we could filter it down as well and now we'll filter what was on five back up a little bit so if you filter it these filters are so steep if you filter them down too far you just won't hear anything anyway that's what I mean you have to sometimes when you're tailoring a sound or adjusting it you have to go back and forth between the active zones that are being triggered in order to kind of achieve the result that you're wanting to so let's get a fresh start let's exit out of here and we've got the asterisk there so that means we've made changes I'm just gonna uh, increment and decrement away so now when I go back to it I don't have any changes so let's start from scratch uh, the first section block here is the oscillator so let's just turn the knob and you can see the parameters come up for you to be able to choose different oscillator types so I'm gonna explain these a little bit I'm not gonna demo every different parameter but I'm gonna use these as talking points a little bit because some people may be confused about what these different parameters mean and when you would use them so PCM stands for pulse code modulation this is the most common type of synthesis this is where Roland, to, in order to create the sounds in this keyboard, they uh, took a microphone and sampled actual instruments. 
and so whatever that sample is is stored in ROM uh, internally into the keyboard and so you could think of this as being the most common type of synthesis generation so it's basically just playing black playing back a sampled instrument chromatically across the scales and sometimes they don't sample an instrument sometimes it could be like a noise or like a sound effect and it could also be it's very common for it to be like an analog style sample so it could be a PCM of a sine wave or a PCM of a saw tooth or something like that so that can kind of and those type values are in there you could if you could click on PCM you can and click OK there and then if you click on value it pulls up all the options it's like almost a thousand so you could scroll through all these and you could find a sawtooth sound wave that's in there and that sawtooth would sound very similar to the analog oscillator as well so many years ago uh, some of the early keyboards I had was like just some Yamaha's like the QY or the uh, SY77 just some of these really old style 1990 style keyboards all they had was PCM sounds but you could create synth type leads with it or synth type pads and things like that it would sound very similar um, let's cancel out of this so we didn't change anything here um, I do want to show you a couple of the other oscillator types so we mentioned PCM there's also VA so that stands for virtual analog so virtual analog is where you take digital circuits and you try to emulate what an analog synthesizer like the uh, profits or the Moogs, Moogs, um, all these older style keyboards that had tubes inside of them instead of um, circuit chips and so they would react a little different sometimes their values would change non-linearly which was desirable anyway they had a lot of characteristics the emulation of these virtual analog synthesis has become very popular probably in the last I would say 10 years easily almost every high-end synthesizer and workstation has virtual analog uh, virtual analog style sound generation in it um, so it's a common feature now but it's kind of a high-end feature it also gives you a few more parameters that you can access once you have that style oscillator selected. Um, the next one is PCM sync so it's very similar to PCM except it changes how the playback is. Um, if we click on PCM sync I believe some of the let's click on some of the values here. Um, so these would be instruments that maybe continue on like if you think of an organ for example you know if you play an organ as long as you hold down the key it'll continue on playing and same for like many other sounds like a sawtooth and so forth it's not like a piano where you hit the keys and as soon as you hit it even though you continue holding it it dies out so you could think of those sync PCMs as being uh, PCMs that do that I could be wrong I think that's what it is I, um, the next one is super saw so it's just another type of um, synth saw always generator and the next one is noise so a lot of virtual synths have virtual analog synth also has a noise uh, generation oscillator type so you can think of noise as being like ocean waves or static on a TV you can use that as the base oscillator and shape it and you can get some usable sounds with just noise um, it's pretty amazing actually so um, let's go ahead and cancel out this and I haven't changed anything still um, I'll still increment and decrement to come back here so dec um, increment and decrement a way to, to get away from that and come back in case you changed anything while you were looking at those parameters and speaking of parameters there's also a parameter button so each one of these blocks you know you have knobs and it'll actively change the value whatever you touch <clears throat> but also 
you have parameters where not only does it pull up just that pop-up menu in the, whatever screen you're on if you click on the parameter button it actually takes you to the sub edit pages so this is the pages let's exit out of this if we look at this it says tone edit and it says oscillator parameter PRM so let's exit out of this and if we went to menu and then we clicked on tone edit and let's say we were on common if you clicked on this oscillator parameter you'd be able to access this page as well just by clicking on this button so here's all the same options and there's values for each one of these options that can be changed so you know once you select any value here you can change once you select any of the oscillator parameters you can change values within these to change the sound so for example um, let's leave this on sawtooth and play it so let's change the pulse width so there's a sweet spot in there where it kind of becomes a little bit more grainy um, and again too it may be because we're listening to five and six they're both triggered as you're editing values here you want to make sure that you're not hearing something that you think is being changed but it's actually something that's in one of the zones that you're not editing so if you wanted to you could bring the volume down for six and now you're just hearing that pulse or you're just hearing that sawtooth sound so let's uh let's go back here to this pulse width you can see there is a part there where it kind of the peaks of the sawtooth kind of resonates a little more and then you can also change the depth so we're we're doing some pulse modulation to this and so as you increase the depth it's changing how much it the oscillation is affecting the sound set to zero it won't affect it at all and you can adjust this one basically kind of thickens up how the sawtooth sounds it's very common to be building out a synth sound and the the part of the sawtooth that sounds crispy like kind of high at the end the sizzling sound will kind of resonate and and be dominant so it'll start kind of losing bottom end so that's why you'll have knobs here to adjust the thickness or the fatness so that's what's going on with this one here <clears throat> let's exit out of this and then let's go to the next section and I think I'm actually gonna start this in a different video clip